Uh, how did you deal with rejection when you were a child? Fortunately, I didn't have to go through a whole lot of rejection, young, being young, because of my family that was so supportive. Um, there wasn't a whole lot that I set out to do unless I knew I was going to be successful at it. I just wouldn't do it. Um, maybe that's the Virgo in me. Maybe that's also just the way I was brought up that I, I just, and I think it's also part of my personality that I, I would never say I'm going to do something unless I was going to give it 180% and it was going to be brilliant. Mm -hmm. It just wouldn't be worth my time. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a whole lot of rejection, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. I mean, I don't, I didn't try out for a lot of teams and never get on them. I didn't, right. you know, I wasn't, I was just kind of always doing my own thing. Right. So unless I rejected my own self, I was pretty much good to go. Um, when did you realize that you had special gifts? Um, if you ask my mother, she would say, you know, the day I was born, I was doing things, which is not the truth. I, I think I realized, I think I embraced the talents I have, all of them, probably a, between a year and a year and a half ago, that recent. I think that I knew I had talent. I just didn't believe wholeheartedly in it. I don't think as much as I do now. When did people who didn't owe it to you, like not, not say friends something. and not family, I would but say you started probably getting like, feedback like, from the world? Eight, like eight years ago, eight or nine years ago. Well, but what about, like when did the first teacher say you're a great writer? No one, ever. Really? I wasn't. I mean, the, really, the writing came only like eight years ago, and it was only out of pure frustration as an actress that I hated the scripts that were coming in for me. And I thought, okay, well, if this is what's coming in, I can at least do this. I, I might, I mean, I might be a little bit better, but I can at least be this bad. That's that was my whole, my whole energy that went into the writing came from from that from that place. It was out of frustration. So there really, I never, I wasn't this great writer. I didn't, I wasn't in any advanced classes. I was horrible at math, hated science, I could stand English and history, but I wasn't this great writer, I wasn't a great actress, I didn't even, I was really only dancing, you know, and that was like silly, you know, your average jazz tap ballet kind of thing, um, of which I really wasn't great at them either. It really wasn't until I decided, okay, I'm going to be an actress from this point on, that I really became better, and that was without really any training at all. And the voice I sing, and that kind of started at the same time where I thought, all right, I took a very few classes because I was doing a show and wanted to make sure I didn't lose my voice. And then it all kind of started from that place. Who was the first person to tell you that you're going to make your living in the entertainment industry? Aside from my family? Yeah. Someone who didn't know it to you. I think it was a show that I did out here, my first musical. Uh, it was called Pepper Street, and I starred in it. For and what on, year was that? Um, that was like 13 years ago. And they were extremely supportive. And I hadn't really even sung in front of anybody. Mm -hmm. And it was a musical, and I had the lead role. I was the first one on the stage, the last one off. And that was the first time I started seeing reviews and the people that, you know, coming back to me with right. the response. I knew then I was in the right place. So you didn't have mentors prior to oh, 15 no. years ago? Oh, no. None. None at all. Just really, I relied on complete and total support from my family saying, you should give it a try. You, you gotta go try it. And other than that, there was no one, I mean, I don't have family in the business. I don't have an uncle who's a producer or an aunt who's a casting director or, you know, uh, parents who are writers or actors. I didn't know anybody. I mean, it was really like figuring it out all as I go along, and I still do. I think, I think in this business, you kind of have to keep changing the game just because the game always changes you know right. it's continues to kind of take a different turn and where now I do believe that I think to be the level of success that I want anyway that you have to do a lot of different things and you have to kind of keep control over your projects as much as you as much as you can anyway mm -hmm. or at least have a lot of involvement in them mm -hmm. maybe control is too big of a word when did you first get paid for acting um, soon after I came, I started doing commercials. I did a couple of commercials. About 13 years ago? Um, that was about 13 years ago. I started doing commercials first and then went into doing some sitcoms and then the acting kind of started from that place. 1994? Uh, yeah, around that, around that time frame. So, 90, 93, 94, mm -hmm. where I was just, I mean, it was, it started out easy, not in the level that I wanted to, but the, you know, I wasn't, I'm not really a commercial type person, but that's exactly what happened when I first came here, mm -hmm. were the commercials. Mm -hmm. 
what type of uh, elementary and high school, public school you went to? Public. Public? Public school. And uh, what kind of crowd were you in in high school? I was a little bit of every crowd. I didn't, there was, I was a cheerleader for a while, and then the last year of school I thought, okay, I need to be a singer. And singers can't be cheerleaders because they lose your voice. And I want to be an actor, I need to put my energy into that. So I kind of was a part of a little bit of every group that I kind of, I mean, I knew the cheerleaders, I knew the jocks, I knew the, you know, the theater kids. It wasn't like I was a wholly part of anybody, but kind of little bits and pieces, which oddly enough is still kind of how I see myself living out here. I mean, I have a lot of different friends that are in a lot of different areas of their life. Well, most of them are in the entertainment industry, but kind of different facets of the entertainment industry. And then there are some people that are, aren't in it at all, you know, which is, which is great. I think you always have to have that, I think you kind of get lost if you're only focusing on just that one thing that you can kind of get sucked in and forget, you know, there's a whole other world out there besides the entertainment industry. And I think sometimes we all forget it's about entertaining and it's a business. It's just a work. And if you go to anybody else in the country and they have these, you know, jobs doing whatever else they're doing, most of the time they have well-rounded love relationships and, you know, people that aren't just in their one work environment. So it's kind of what I try to keep in mind on days that the entertainment industry <laughs> isn't what you want it to be. You have to remember there's a, it's an entire other world out there, outside of Hollywood, right. which is a good thing. <laughs>